Now, the question which we get asked is, well, why are you doing things differently? Why have you decided to sort of deviate, uh, to come up with a solution in a different way? Um, and part of the reason that we've done that is, if you have a look at the bottom of the slide here, you can see that sprinkler design has been so consistent for well over 100 years. Um, on the left there, you can see what was the first practical patent for a traditional sprinkler system that was produced by um, a man called Thomas Grinnell in 1882. And on the right, you can see a glass bulb, which is commonplace. You'll find it in buildings all across the world. And I think that that consistency and that growth is um, in part due to the brilliance of uh, Thomas Grinnell's design, but also the nature of the industry where there's been little incentive um, to do things particularly different or to, to improve. Um, um, so this is something that we've, we've, we've decided to take on. And there's two uh, elements that we are looking to focus on with our system. The first one um, is early activation. We wanted a system that could operate earlier than a ceiling mounted glass bulb. This is uh, fundamentally, uh, uh, this is critical um, in, in achieving those functional requirements because we, our objective should be to minimize the production of toxic gases um, and heat so people can escape or maintain uh, survivable conditions um, within the building. And then the second one is because we wanted to enable the uh, efficient use of water mist. Uh, and this is important because we want to reduce the demand on the water supply and as a result, have a system that is applicable in a broader set of buildings. Um, the cost of upgrading the water supply or providing the water infrastructure can um, prevent the adoption of active fire suppression systems in certain buildings. Um, so this is a, a threshold that we wanted to sit under. Now to illustrate this, um, I'm going to show you some fire testing that we did at the Fire Protection Association. So what we did is we, comp we compared your standard BS9251 ceiling mounted sprinkler, um, um, one that you'll see you know, retrofit in, in, in buildings. Um, up and down the UK and Automist Smart Scan. Um, we knew that there were identical fires because we took the temperature data of how the, 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 the fire progressed. Um, so the room on the left is protected by Automist and on the right by the ceiling mounted sprinkler. The first thing that you'll notice is that Automist operates uh, and uh, addresses the fire approximately two minutes before the residential sprinkler. And it's able to do this because we're using this electronic trigger that is measuring the change in temperature over time and not just waiting for that uh, threshold on the ceiling to um, reside uh, over that sort of the 57 degrees um, um, that is required in order to break the glass bulb. So we were able to address that fire with uh, only three liters of water, um, whereas when the sprinkler does um, address it, we're using considerably more, uh, approximately 83 uh, liters. Just to put that into, into context, a traditional sprinkler uses enough water to fill a bathtub um, every three minutes. So it's a really uh, considerable amount of water. Um, and obviously our, our, our customers really appreciate that. We minimize the consequential water damage um, that does occur when the systems do activate. Now you might say, well, two minutes is, uh, is not a uh, significant difference in activation time, but um, with the nature of modern fires, where we've got an increasing amount of plastics um, in, in, in our buildings, um, um, that sensitivity gives us the ability to respond to smoldering, uh, slow burning fires, which a lot of these sort of electrical or white goods fires have, a, have quite a long insipid stage. So we want to um, um, prevent that, that buildup of, of, of toxic gases. Now, the second element that I uh, talked about was the efficient use of water mist. 
And this was really inspired by thinking about the physics behind how active um, water fire suppression systems work. So traditional sprinklers, um, the whole idea, the principle behind their operation is to use large droplets from the ceiling. And the method that they use to, to work is by wetting all of the surfaces below. So using gravity, we're going to cover the fire load and all of the fuel underneath the spray head with as much water as possible. Um, and that's going to stop the fire, um, suppress it, um, potentially um, extinguish it if it's not um, shielded uh, and prevent it from, from, from growing. Now, when we went to what was at the time the very first International Water Mist Association uh, conference, at the BRE about 10 years ago, and we met this man, Professor Ragnar Vigas, um, and he said to us, um, well, you, 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 you guys um, from, from Imperial, you're, you're interested in designing a, uh, a water mist system. Well, what you should be doing is utilizing the, uh, the, the physics, um, the mode of operation that water mist provides to get the, to get the best benefit out of, out of the technology. He, he, he said to us that well, what most water mist manufacturers do is they fight, follow the same model that a traditional sprinkler does. And they mount it on the ceiling. And the problem with doing that is that all of the heat is on the ceiling. So before you can address the fire with your small droplets of water mist, you have to cool the hot layer, um, create a lot of steam. You have to cool the hot layer, penetrate that hot layer before you address uh, the fire. He said to us, um, if you put your nozzles lower down, then you can um, put a significant amount of water mist in and around the base of the fire and you get something called entrainment taking place where as the fire starts to breathe, as the fire um, requires oxygen to survive, it draws in um, oxygen across the floor, lower down, and then it pushes out that heat um, uh, above it and uh, through its trunk and it spreads out across the ceiling. So by using uh, Archimedes principle, um, you can uh, utilize the, the fire against itself, the, the, the turbulence that the fire creates. So Professor Ragnar Vigas, he even had a club, he'd call it the Archimedes club for manufacturers that used um, um, water mist efficiently. Um, and this is a sort of a guiding principle behind our, our product. Now, just to show you this in action, I'm going to show you a video from um, our BS8458 uh, testing, just to explain what you can see here. In the bottom left, you've got our spray head, uh, and about two meters, two and a half meters away, you've got our standardized fire load. You can see on this uh, inset picture uh, um, all of the components that make up the, that, the, the fire load that we we active fire suppression systems are tested against. We've got our wooden crib in the corner there. We've got um, non-flame proofed foam boards that burn very, very quickly, even a heptane pool. And all of these uh, packages are lit. And the purpose of the test is to ensure that the temperatures do not go out of control. Um, and that fire is suppressed for the duration of the test. Now, what you'll see in a minute is that when the system deploys, because we're putting a significant amount of water in and around the base of the fire, you get that powerful uh, suppression and then extinguishment uh, taking place. And really uh, illustrates this entrainment because we don't have a direct line of sight on the base of the fire because that plywood board is on the way, is in the way, but because that fire is drawing in oxygen, um, that's why you get that, uh, that phenomenon taking place. 